Hello! What's up? How you guys doing? Uh, welcome to a new instructional series I'm going to be doing on my YouTube channel. The idea of this series is to kind of give you guys a, a walk through chess history and to be, able, to be able to follow along with some of the greatest chess players who ever lived and a lot of the world champions. And basically what's going to happen is we're going to have a different position each day and it's going to go in chronological order pretty much from the beginning of the world championship history until current day, which will take many years. <laughs> um, there will not only be world championship matches, though. There will be famous tournaments, famous games all over the place. And I really like looking at the old games. Something about it uh, really excites me. Think about, you know, people playing the game that we all love back in the 1800s, early 1900s. And seeing the skill that the players had in chess slowly you know, improve throughout time. So we're going to start with the first game of the first world championship match between Johann Zuckertort and Wilhelm Steinitz. Now, Steinitz, you know, he's like kind of, I think he's called the like father of positional chess or something, strategic chess. I don't know exactly, but he had a lot of really cool st strategical ideas that were way ahead of his time. Now, objectively, he wasn't the strongest player. Like, I would say if you gave him a rating estimate, if he just, like, appeared in, like, the modern-day chess world with no chance to study new ideas or anything like that, I would say he would be approximately 2,300. Uh, I've seen a lot of his games, and there, there are a lot of pretty big mistakes, so that's kind of where I'd put him. Maybe 2,300 USCF, maybe 2,250 FIDE. Um, but despite that, in the year 1886, when there's no information out there, there's no books, there's no, I mean, there's books, but they're not like Dvoretsky uh, books. It's, it's hard. You know, chess was much harder. You had to figure everything out on your own. And so it's always nice. It's all, it's impressive to see these guys who didn't have the benefits that we do, the databases, the opening theory. They tried to work this out on their own, and it's really interesting to see it. Uh, go down. So first, what you're going to do in all of these positions, I'm going to, I'm not going to go over complete games most of the time, but they're often going to be in like one to five minute bite sized videos. Every now and then they'll get up to ten minutes, but they're going to be short and sweet, and so you can kind of just pick up something from an old game pretty quickly without having to invest too much time. I'm just going to mostly focus on the key moments, and that way you're also going to learn like at least one key thing each video. So, it's black to move here. This is the first world championship game of all time. And the question is, what should black play here? Because Steinitz played this game very well. A very nice first world championship game ever. And always pause your video, figure out what move you play and why, and then unpause it, and you'll get the explanation. All right, so Steinitz in this position played the very aggressive move, knight to h4. Now, that move doesn't look so good. First of all, if, if white castles, black would be happy, because all these pieces are around the king, and the rook would come up and kind of rip that king apart. But white can just go g3, and it's like, wait a second. The knight can either come in here and get trapped, or it can go back to g6, and what have we really gained? Uh, but Stein saw a step further. He played knight to g2, which looks kind of crazy if you haven't worked it out. King f1. And then you see what he did? He sacrificed his knight for a pawn and then captured the other pawn with his bishop. And the reason why this is a good move is just because the king is absolutely wide open right now. Uh, and there's just like almost no way he's going to defend against the onslaught of pieces that are going to come after his king. So he played king to g2. White simply, I'm sorry, black simply brought the bishop back. White played queen to g1, which is a little suspicious. Try to find black's next move. If you found the rook lift, rook to h6, with the idea of rook to g6, uh, that I believe is the best move. And after king f1, black gets another piece into the attack. Queen f7, Queen to D, sorry, Queen F2, Queen to D7. 
And the rest of the game's kind of interesting to see how black overwhelms white in this position. Again, white is up a piece, but these pieces are kind of not doing that much. This king is wide open, and it's just big trouble for white. Rook g1, he just gives up this other pawn. Now black has three pawns for the piece, so material, he has material equality. Knight to g4, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight to e2, queen to e7, knight to f4, rook to h6. Uh, and he just kind of starts pushing these pawns now. He has these extra pawns on the king side, he starts to use them. And now he plays a really nasty move. This e3 pawn is weak, he sticks his rook on f3. Because if the knight takes, the pawn takes, attacks the queen and the knight. So instead, white played knight to f1, another defensive move. And now black brought his last piece into the attack, rook b8. And white's pieces are just totally, totally backed up here. After king d2, f5. After a5, f4. He just keeps coming. Rook h1, he just doesn't know what to do, he's just kind of moving around, waiting for his eventual demise. Queen f7, rook to e1, pawn takes pawn, knight takes pawn, and now rook f2 is completely crushing. Because after a move like queen to g1, queen to f3 is super strong. Because after knight takes bishop, queen check, king c1, checkmate. rook b1, checkmate. So, he actually sacrificed his queen here, but it didn't help him very much. And he resigned a few moves later. Uh, sorry, I, I missed a move. Knight g4, bishop check first. Pawn takes, bishop d2, e3, bishop c1. I mean, you can see he's down material and he, he's getting attacked still. King d7. King e6, king here, bishop takes, what do you do? Bishop takes, I don't know why I do this. Oh, he's, he's going for this cheapo, hoping that black will take the rook. But Steinitz wasn't born yesterday, and after bishop f4, Zucker Tort resigned. So a very nice way to start out the first world championship game ever. Uh, and I hope you guys are going to really like these videos. There's going to be cool little ideas in each one. Uh, sometimes you're going to have the chance to improve upon the play of a world champion, and sometimes you're just going to have to, you know, uh, see the brilliancy that they played or the really good strategical moves. And the stuff that guys like Carlson, Kasparov, and Karpov have learned from. Alright, thank you, and I'll see you tomorrow with uh, another game from this match. Bye-bye.